Welcome back. So a Chinese-made artificial intelligence model uh, called uh, DeepSeek is taking the tech world by storm. And it looks, uh, uh, feels and works uh, very much like ChatGPT. But some experts say uh, this software can have conversations like a person or predict shopping habits. Interesting. Worldwide Works the CEO, Arthur Goldstack, uh, joins us now for more. Arthur, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. The world of tech for me, I must say, so fascinating, right? Over the past few years, the world just engulfed in learning about ChatGPT and how to use AI. And then the business world, it seems, just over the, the, the past week, you know, beaming over the entry of DeepSeek. But I want to start with the basics, right? What is DeepSeek and what is... Uh, all this hype around it. First, I've got to agree with you that uh, tech has become so exciting. There's something new every day and every week there's something really big. And once in a while there's an earthquake and Deep Seek has been an earthquake in the tech space because it is an AI model, a lot like ChatGPT, but they claim that it costs them only $5.6 billion, $5 million to build where ChatGPT costs something like $6 billion. And that's actually what set the world and the markets alight. Yeah, that's very interesting. And then, of course, for the users, there's a question around how it differs um, from, say, a ChatGPT and OpenAI, um, where um, artificial intelligence users have, over the past few years, been learning and exploring and figuring out how to use the intelligence. I've tried various uh, tricks and tests on uh, DeepSeek. And I have to say, it's very impressive. A lot of the time, it feels like you're using ChatGPT. In fact, the look and feel is very much like ChatGPT. And you can ask it to write articles for you. We actually got it to write an article for our magazine, Gadget, uh, to explain what is DeepSeek. So DeepSeek itself wrote an article about DeepSeek for us. <laughs> but there, there are limitations. Um, and it has some of the limitations ChatGPT has. But one very interesting thing is ChatGPT, if you use the free version, only has access to internet content up to uh, late 2022, whereas DeepSeek has access to internet content up to October 2023. So not a massive difference, mm. but it's a more up-to-date uh, chatbot. It has more up-to-date content. That's, of course, when you don't use a paid version. Yeah. When you compare... Uh, deep seek to the paid version of ChatGPT, it cannot compare. Uh, the paid version of ChatGPT has live access to the internet. It has various agents and um, add-ons and extensions that allow you to do very advanced AI work. So, uh, for example, ChatGPT has a tool called Scholar GPT, which is aimed at academics, and it's a really powerful assistant for any um, academic. Deep seek obviously is still a long way from that because they don't have the kind of funds that OpenAI has to develop ChatGPT. But I'll give you another example of what it can do yeah. uh, that took a long time for ChatGPT to get right. And that is you can upload into DeepSeek, let's say a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF document, and you can ask it to read it and analyze it and sum it up and even write a report from it. I uploaded a a spec sheet for a smartphone and said, write a press release out of this. And it wrote a very effective press release, probably almost as good as what I received from the PR agency <laughs> itself. So maybe they were using a deep <laughs> seek, I don't know. But I was really impressed with its capabilities. Yeah, very interesting. Eh? I mean, it's, 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 it's getting to a point where it's almost important for uh, users to use the AI so that they're able to decipher when uh, they're receiving content that is AI generated. And I think that is uh, incredibly important. Mm -hmm. You've got to use the AI to understand when people are uh, giving you content that is AI generated. Otherwise, you may very well uh, not know the difference, right? That is so true because there are a lot of giveaways of uh, something that looks like it's produced by AI. But if you're not trying to produce content yourself using AI, you don't notice those. Once you start using it, it comes up with phrases and structures and, for example, very uh, glib conclusions that are designed to make everyone happy. Mm. So whether you this or whether you that, this is the thing for you. You know, that kind of um, a, a very pedestrian kind of uh, content, yeah. you start spotting that in what people send you. 
and you realize, hey, they're using AI. Yeah. Uh, another example, anything that starts with, we're thrilled to tell you. That used to be maybe once a month. Now it's uh, five times a day. Somebody's thrilled to tell me something. <laughs> so I'm thrilled to spot them using AI. <laughs> Yeah, those are good tips and tricks on how to pick it up. Um, and I think it's important to, for employers especially to learn um, when they, you know, content that they're receiving is AI generated. If it starts with a, if someone's thrilled, you, 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 <laughs> you should be concerned. Let's talk about the politics, yeah. though, the global politics of what DeepSeek has done. Because uh, DeepSeek, it's a Chinese sort of innovation. And um, then there's the question around what that does to the global market, um, a superpower, for instance, like the U.S., how they respond to deep sea coming into the market, uh, making waves from a financial and economic point of view. But this is going to be uh, growing at a fast pace, I imagine, um, where users are concerned. You look at the TikTok example, um, just a day before the inauguration of Donald Trump, TikTok shut down, a Chinese innovation. Is deep sea going to face similar challenges? It may well, but initially it's been fascinating to see who reacts in what way. And you find that the politicians aren't too fussed about it, but the people who really are kicking up a fuss are those who have their own AI companies like OpenAI, for example, Microsoft, Google. They all are claiming that uh, DeepSeek has stolen American technology, but they can't show any evidence for it, or they're refusing to show what they believe is uh, the evidence. And then investors are really upset, investors into the big AI companies, because they've put billions of dollars yeah. of investment into the AI startups like OpenAI for ChatGPT, but also into various others. Uh, it's It's been uh, one of the investment frenzies of the past few decades. And when you are putting, let's say, as an investor, billions of dollars into a company to build a tool, and you find someone else is building the same tool for a few million dollars, you are suddenly rather upset. Mm. So behind the scenes, um, they probably challenging uh, the uh, companies, the companies they've invested in, to show how they spent the money and why they can't do it as cost, cost effectively. But in public, they are pretending to be deeply angry at the way Deep Seek has broken the rules, supposedly, stolen their technology, or lying. Uh, in fact, one of the posts on Twitter said that it was Chinese Communist Party PsyOps, which is uh, a shorthand for psychological warfare. And it's usually conspiracy theorists who throw the term PsyOp um, around. So that's a conspiracy theory that's being driven hard but especially by the investor community. But people who are involved in, the, in, in using AI, who have to pay for AI in order to uh, get their work done or to build their tools, they are delighted. We had the former CEO of Intel, Pat Gelsinger, mm. declaring that he was going to use DeepSeek now instead of the other tools for a church-based startup. <laughs> so he's not too worried about it being evil. He's going to use it for good. <laughs> it's fascinating. I, I, you know, just you, you could, you could just laugh for hours when you look at the world of tech. And, um, you know, you've got the race as well. That's the reality. You know, when someone declares that they're going to be using DeepSeek, um, you, you've got those various AI brands then trying to get other people to declare that their artificial intelligence is the fastest and the smartest. So let's talk about, you know, what you see for this race going into 2025, because this is certainly a hot start for the year where artificial intelligence is concerned? Well, the reality is that it's leveled the playing field somewhat between American AI or Western AI and Chinese AI. We've known for a long time that China is catching up to the world in AI uh, research. In fact, in my book, uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to AI, I talk about the trend that shows that uh, Chinese academic papers on AI would overtake the Americans in terms of quality papers by 2025, and this was written two years ago, but it's based on research that was conducted in 2019. Already then, it was known that by 2025, uh, Chinese AI research would leap ahead of American. And when you see that kind of research paper output, you know that it's going to have an impact a couple of years later. Yeah. And now we're starting to feel that impact. 
So I think what we're going to see this year is an intensification of the release of AI products and massive claims of one being better than the other, but also of one stealing from the other. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. It's, it'll be a good year um, for us to play with all of those platforms. Arthur, thank you so much for uh, your time. We really do appreciate it. Arthur Goldstack is the CEO of Worldwide Works and author of The Hitchhiker's Guide.